Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and today's episode, as you can see, we're in a little bit of a new locale, just a shift of the camera, and we're going to be checking out my samples, just like I did fairly recently with my bottle collection. This is really going to be just a one hit, straight through, get through all of these. I'm not going to go into them in great detail because a lot of them I won't know much about yet until I've done my research. But uh, it'll just show you what I've got on the shelf, really, so you get an idea about what's coming up. There's well over 100 here, so I wholeheartedly recommend that you grab yourself a dram or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, whatever time of day it is for you, grab the appropriate drink and maybe sit down and uh, enjoy this with me. But for me, I've got the Glen Scotia double wood, double cask, double cask. I'll be taking a sip of that when I get a bit thirsty. Let's get straight into it, shall we? First of all, I'm going to go down here. You probably can't see that underneath the camera, but uh, I've got a couple here. Uh, this is the Lakes Distillery. This was their founders one, the three-year one. But I'm keeping just a wee bit of that for a friend. I've already covered that. Then we've got a couple that I got sent from the Whiskey Couch. Gustav, if you haven't uh, checked his channel out, make sure you do. It's three ships, South African whiskey. This is a 10-year PX finish and the 15 Pintage. Pintage cast. Don't really know much about these yet. But he did send me a load of stuff as well. Hopefully my mic will play ball today. What I'll do is I'm going to go from the top across and I'm going to move them across as I do it. So hopefully I won't be covering the whiskies I'm talking about, but I might going to be standing in front of it a little bit. But on the top here, we've got stuff that isn't scotch and stuff that is scotch. So you can see I'm about 50-50. But first one's first. I've got a four square rum. I don't really drink rum. So I got a sample of this because I would like to drink rum and I was told four square is the way to go. Let's push that over there. So next section here is my bourbons. These are all really from friends. Uh, you'll see a couple, like this one here. If you see a bottle like this, this is from the Dram Team subscription. I buy this subscription every month and they send me five to six drams. If you're in the UK, I definitely would check them out. But yeah, that's the first one, few single malt. Few do some good whiskies. They're very expensive, but the single malt is done similar way to scotch. So. Worth trying, I think, worth knowing about. This is a Hunter and Scott. Literally don't know anything about that. My friend Gus gave me that, so I'm gonna try that and see what it's like. Michter's Single Barrel Straight Rye. Have tried this, superb. Haven't reviewed it, obviously. Pretty much everything up here hasn't been reviewed, because if I have reviewed it, I tend to drink it downstairs. But uh, the Single Barrel stuff they make, about hundred pound a bottle, really good though, really worth it. Black Dirt, Single Barrel, New York. Hopefully you can, I'm holding these up, but I very doubt you can see. I'm just checking down on the camera. You can't see them, can you? It's too washed out. Never mind. You'll just have to trust me what they are. Black Dirt, Single Barrel, New York, Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Don't know anything about that one yet. JD Barrel Proof. So I've got the, uh, the, the other one down here, the Single Barrel Selected. This is the Barrel Proof version of that. So I'll probably do a comparison when I do those two. This is Stag Junior, 66.05%. Really looking forward to trying that one. Have tried it before, really like it. Baker's seven year old, 53.5%. Don't know anything about that one properly yet, so I'll do my research for that. The Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. Now this thing here is only available in America. I've got this due to the generosity of the British Bourbon Society. I think I did have a glass of that, yeah. I got a glass from them. You can see that, fancy, fancy. I really wish you could see these, this writing on here. It's Shame it's washed out a little bit. Maybe I'll try and uh, tone the light down. Excuse the, uh, the little unprofessional light adjustment. Didn't make any difference. Right, let's bang that one back up. Never mind. Warts and all, eh? Warts and all. Old Forester 1920. Now, I can get Old Forester standard over here, but the 1920 is meant to be sublime. As you can see, it's still got the postage seals on it, uh, but I haven't actually tried this one yet, so really looking forward to trying that. Push them over there. Very old Barton 100 proof. Don't know much about that one yet. Still very looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of bourbons actually. Blanton's Original. Now I've got a couple of Blanton's here. I've got another one here. I've got the gold downstairs. The Blanton's Original. Uh, I can go into more details with that when I actually do the review. But this is the uh, another Blanton's SFTW. I'm going to say straight from the barrel, but I'm not sure what that means to be honest. But I'll probably do a comparison video on those as well. The Bullet, 10 year old this is. I can get the Bullet and the Bullet Rye over here without any problems, but the Bullet 10 year old, still in America really. So looking forward to trying that one. Henry McKenna, 10 year. Again, looking forward to trying that one. Knob Creek Rye, now I've just picked up the standard Knob Creek and done a video of that one fairly recently. 
I won't put a link up there because there'll be far too many to do, but go and check out my video on that. This is the rye version. I'm definitely going to be trying a few more ryes this year. So if you're into your ryes, check out the channel and when things come out, you'll see them. Few Delilahs, this is their special edition one. Can't remember the exact reason why it was released, but uh, again, research will get done for when videos come out. So that's the bourbons. Not so many, but you know, interesting stuff. Now this stuff here is all British whiskey that isn't Scotch. So we're basically talking English and Welsh because anything else would be Irish and Scotch, right? So for Welsh stuff, we've got the Penderyn Myth. This was actually uh, one of their ones for the foreign markets and for uh, travel retail and things like that. So I'm glad I've got a sample of that. I've tried it before. It wasn't my favorite of their range, but you know, it is what it is. English Whiskey Company, Chapter 16, Smoky PX Cask. Looking forward to that. Can't even see these ones, can you? I'm so disappointed. Sorry about that you can't see the, the bottles, but never mind. The Norfolk Malt and Rye, which is again English Whiskey Company. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this one will be like. I guess they've literally mixed malt and rye together. Interesting, interesting. Another one from them, the English Smoky. I did do the original quite a few years ago now, actually. Uh, these two samples came from Ben Bowers, but uh, I'm looking forward to trying that. And uh, I like my smoking whiskey these days. So, another one from those guys is the Norfolk Farmers. Fair enough. Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery Projects. Don't know much about those guys yet, so uh, I'm looking forward to trying those. And obviously I like bringing English whiskey to you guys as well, because I think my biggest sets of followings are uh, US, UK, and then Canada. So obviously North America, killing it. This one is the Cotswolds World Whiskey Forum, which if you watched my bottle video, I have got a full bottle of that, but uh, someone sent me a sample of this, so it means I don't have to open my bottle. So I will be trying that. Next, we've got Irish whiskey. Now, I apologise to everybody because I don't really cover Irish whiskey enough and I don't actually have that many here. So I'm probably going to try and get all of these done this year sometime. But, you know, if you want to see more Irish, then just let me know in the comments below because I will stop doing scotches and do more Irish and more world whiskies if that's what you want to see. But I follow the numbers and the numbers don't lie and say that scotch is really the king. So I've been covering more scotch. But if you want to see more of other things, then just let me know. So we've got the Connemara 12 year old. I understand that that's a smoky one. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Let's so just push these over a bit. I did, I did have these nicely organized, but you know, my OCD can live for another day. Connemara, the Teeling Distillery exclusive, chestnut finish. I've got a couple of Teelings, have covered one Teeling before, but chestnut finish is definitely something I'm interested in trying because that, you know, it's gotta be different and I've never tried a chestnut finish whiskey before. Tullamore Dew. That's the original one, and I think I had something else as well. Yeah, I'll get that one out as well. Tullamore Dew, 14-year-old as well, so they'll be interesting to check out. The Method of Madness single grain. You can see these have been reused. This used to be a uh, an inch more in 18, but now, now it's a Method of Madness single grain. Definitely interested in that. Uh, and these are some ones I picked up in an airport, Dublin, of course. Writer's Tears, literally don't know anything about that one yet. Teeling, of course, I have covered some teelings before. This one's the small batch, this one's a single grain. So I guess what I covered before was the single malt, can't remember now. But it was a long time ago and I really should have covered these by now, but because the seals are good, I've kind of left them in their glass. And finally, the Irishman, Founders Reserve. You can see that one, way. So it's just the white labels, which is literally everything, but never mind. Finally, we've got World Whiskies. So these things are anything, anything that isn't Scotch, American, or the categories previously said. So we've got some, Japanese, not very. I've got very few Japanese this year. It's getting very expensive, and I've covered all of the cheap ones. So we're moving on. Indian whiskey, Paul John edited. Big fan of Paul John. These are in no order. Nika coffee malt. This is the Nika produced through the coffee still, not because it's got some coffee put into it. C O F F E Y. The Batiki whiskey, Millstone aged six years. That's Dutch whiskey. That'll get me a scratch on the map, so I'm looking forward to trying that one. McMira Svenska Ruk, which literally means Swedish smoke. Looking forward to trying that on the channel. Have tried it before, really nice. Starwood, New World Malt Whiskey, Australian. Now, really good, really good. It's not, not that aged, it's about two, three, four years aged, something like that. This Starwood Wine Cask Edition isn't actually whiskey, Australian spirit drink. Now in Australia they sell it as whiskey because they don't have the same laws, but it's only two years old 
and it's one of the best whiskies I've ever tried for its price category. Really nice, definitely worth checking out. McMira Skewerted, Skewerted, I'm going to say. I probably picked up on that. Pretty good, pretty good. Starting to get expensive, but it's pretty good. Oh no. That's going to happen a few days. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. For the sake of speed, because it took me 20 minutes to talk about 30, 40 bottles, so 100 samples. I'm going to have to power through. Paul John Brilliance is another Indian whiskey. Really good whiskey, in fact. If you can get it, you can get it. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Tirin Enpeli. Tirin Enpeli. Never heard of it before, before I got this uh, in the dram team. So again, as always, I can't know everything, so I will do my research before I do the video, but this is a Finnish whiskey. Another scratch, so I'll definitely try and get that done this year. Now, this poor little thing has been sat on my shelf for so long. I don't know if you can't even read that, I bet. But this is the uh, Storning, Stowning, Storning, Young Rye. So unfortunately, this is long gone on the shelves now. It's been replaced by much, uh, much newer stuff. This is the, the 2015 version. But Saulek sent me this in something like February 2017, so nearly two years ago. And I've been quite lax on covering it because I want to go out into the woods where that's how they film there. So I want to film mine out in the woods and it's just finding the time and the equipment to get that done, really. Okay, that's the first shelf done. Let's have a little sip of this. And move on to the scotches. Now again, these are categorised. I'm not quite uh, as anal to, to label them all up yet, but I'm going to start on this and then work backwards. Same as I did before, pushing them over again so you can see what I got. Now this, you won't be able to see this. This is the signatory Linkwood 1995-22 year old. Sublime stuff. Unfortunately, probably gone. I'll have to check when I do the video. But uh, it probably won't even be that much watched video. That's the problem with the independence. People don't tend to watch those videos. So people like me, uh, I, I like to cover whatever I want. But obviously, you've got to cover things that people are going to watch. Otherwise, it's a bit of a shame, right? Glenn Murray aged 10 years in Chardonnay cask. Big fan of Glen Murray. Really like what they do. I feel like they could probably do a bit of a reimagination of their boxing though, because the, the boxings are quite traditional, let's say, and I feel like they get left on the shelves because of it, but that's just my opinion. Um, this was a, a uh, Paul John Brilliance, but it's been replaced by a Ben Rummock 15. It's actually going, coming off the label a bit there. You can see it's been written on in pen. <laughs> a, a friend sent me that. Krigelaki 13 year olds, interesting. I uh, I don't know much about Krigelaki, I must admit. I uh, have tried a few of theirs, not on the channel. This is the Spay Malt Macallan 1998. I can't remember if this is the one that Gus said was awful or not, but should we have a sniff? Let's have a sniff. Hmm. Not so bad, so it might not, might not be that one. Douglas Lang, Old Particular, Speyside, 21 years, 51.5%. Yes. Really looking forward to trying that. Glen Ruthers, 2001 Vintage. Yeah. Not a big fan of Glen Ruthers, I must admit. But, you know, I haven't tried that one yet, so we'll see. Another Glen Murray, the Elgin Heritage, aged 12 years. Another Glen Ruthers, Sherry Cask Reserve. So I'm firing through these. I get a bit bored with uh, space size, I must admit. So um, a lot of these kind of taste similar to me. But uh, Glen Murray, classic sherry. So this is just their bog standard range. About 20 quid in the UK. Well worth it. Well worth it. Glen Livet, Nadura. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Nadura, Oloroso matured. I actually quite like this. Spoiler alert for when I do that video. Tom and Tull, Tom and Tal, aged 12 years. I did do the 10 with Ben something like two years ago. So I'm looking forward to trying that. They call themselves the Gentle Dram, right? So that's just another way of saying really easy going, possibly a little bit boring, but you know, it's cheap enough. Another Glen Murray, Elgin Heritage, aged 15 years, starting to go up. I've got quite a lot of Glen Murrays to get through. So again, if you want to see stuff like that, let me know in the comments or in the live chat, whatever we're doing right now. And uh, let me know and I'll get them covered. Spayburn. Don't know much about Spayburn. <laughs> Again, I really need to look up my pronunciations, but it's, it's Braden Oric. Braden Oric. Roy, if you're watching, let me know. Glen Farkless Heritage, 60 degrees. Now, I think this was meant to be a good one, but not sure. I don't know. Avalor, 16 years. Brilliant. Brilliant whiskey. Cardu, 12 years. 
Actually, I don't think I've even opened that one yet. Yeah, that one's still got a seal. I tend to open these things just to try them. Can't wait to try this one. Balvenie Peat Week 2002, 14 year old. If you don't know about Balvenie's Peat Week, one week a year, they stop making their normal whiskey and they transfer over to smoky whiskey. Uh, this is only something that's been fairly recent. So I think 2016, that was the first one. So in the last couple of years, they've done one every year. And it's, it's always incredible, always incredible. Tamdu, 10 years. Fair play. I've got, I've got a little set for Christmas as well. So I've got the Glenfiddich 12 year, the 15 and the 18. So here's a question for you guys again. Now, I haven't covered the 15, so that's a given. Definitely going to be doing that one again. But I have covered both of these. The 18 I did last year, as in 2018. The 12 I did as one of my very first videos, and it was an awful, awful video. Content, I think, was pretty good still, but I, I, I couldn't present videos back then so if you want to see me re-review this or this or both then let me know give it a vote if not I'll happily drink them on my own off screen but you know if you want to see them again I'll save them moving on now to the Highlands something I don't cover much again but that's because there's not that many of them really in comparison to something like Space Eyes but as you can see I've built up quite a bit of a collection of these in comparison to the rest of it I tend to hammer my Islas but this is the Edredor 12 year, the Caledonia, and I do have, I'm going to sneak that through now, do, do, do. I have the 10 year one as well, I've got this one still in the box, I should just get rid of the box really, what's the point in keeping stuff like that, got that from a shop, so looking forward to trying that, again, if you missed the start, just to reiterate, if you see these bottles, I bought these as part of a subscription service, uh, none of these have been given to me, and nearly everything else I've bought myself or it's been given to me by a friend. The only really ones that you can tell, I'm looking around for them now, stuff like this, Douglas Lang. Douglas Lang sent me that. Uh, but I would say out of the hundred or so I've got up here, maybe five, maybe three, four or five of them were given to me by distilleries or some such. Uh, this is the Robert Graham Cerebin. Literally don't know anything about that one. Loch Lomond, single grain. Really big fan of Loch Lomond at the moment, so looking forward to seeing what they've got. Borders, single grain, again, more grains. I'm a big fan of grains, do like grains, yes. But I like age statement grains. No age statement grains, they can be a bit hit or miss. If they're a bit too young, I don't think it works. Inch Moan, 12 years. Inch Moran, Madeira wood finish. Was a big fan of the Inch Moran when I tried it on the channel fairly recently. Glengiri, Founders Reserve. Push these a bit over so I've got some more room. The Ardmore, Portwood finish, 12 years. I should say as well, if I've got some of these in the wrong categories, I did try my hardest to put them in the right ones, but if I did get them wrong, don't worry about it, it's fine. Anok, 18 years. Now, I've been reluctant to try this one because I haven't tried any other Anoks yet. So, going straight in for the 18 year, mm, we'll see. If you want to see that video again, let me know. I'm sure everyone wants to see everything, but, you know. And that's the Inchmarin 18 year. What was the other one I just had? Uh, Inchmarin Madeira. So I did the 12 fairly recently. I did take the cap off this to smell it. Just really good, really good whiskey. Aberfeldy, 12 year. The Devron, 12 year. Not sure about that one yet. We'll see. One for Roy. Deanston, 2008 Bordeaux cask, nine year old. 58.7%. Looking forward to trying that, because I do like Deanston, I just never bought a bottle. And a Bow Blair 91. Just covered the 99, so looking forward to trying that. Wow, did you see that then? Almost lost the whole thing. Right, next up we've got Islands Whiskey. So, <laughs> really, poor show for the Islands, right? Because you'd think I'd have more Highland Parks, but I actually covered all of my Highland Parks nearly last year. I think, just looking down here, do, 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 yep, yeah, I've covered every single Highland Park that I've got, so... It's probably going to be a while before I cover another one. Um, I did have like the Rebus, the Rebus 30 10 year old to cover, but I thought, what's the point? It was a couple of years old now. No one really cares about that one anymore. Tobamori, aged 10 years. Looking forward to trying that, definitely. The Rock Oyster, aged 18 years. So I've done a lot of Douglas Langs recently, I'm trying to space them out a little bit more now. I, I really liked the Rock Oyster and the Car Strength and the Car Strength Batch 2. This is amazing but I'm not sure whether I want to cover it or not just yet. So if you again, if you want to see that, let me know. Oh, I lied. I told you a big fat lie. I've got a Highland Park 25 year here. 
that I got a couple of years ago. In fact, it's been sat in this poor little sample for a couple of years now, waiting for the right moment to cover it. Now that I've covered the 21, I probably will cover this fairly soon because, I mean, it's really expensive, so it's probably pointless me covering it. You all know it's going to be good. I don't know. I'm probably going to cover it still. It's a video, right? Douglas Lang Provenance Coastal Collection Talisker, eight-year-old, 48.0%. Now, the problem with these Douglas Langs, always, always good, but the titles of them are too big for YouTube. So <laughs> I've got to decide what to call them when I put them in the videos. The Aaron, this is the Sauternes cask. Big fan of Aaron. And then the Aaron 19. I did a, I did a few Aarons recently. Uh, looking forward to trying this one especially. Haven't tried the 19 before. Actually, we're doing all right. Let's just see how we're doing for time. Let's see how we're doing for time. 20 minutes so far, and actually I'm doing all right. I thought this was going to be a really long video, but never mind. Let's go on to the next one, and this is for Campbelltown. Again, not that many to try from here. I've just covered one. Got one in my glass right now. Glen Scotia, why not? Uh, and there's not that many distilleries there anymore. There used to be something like 80 in that region, but they all shut down, and now there's only a few left. Shame. Springbank, cask strength aged 12 years. Don't know what that tastes like yet, but the standard 12 years is. Mm. So looking forward to trying that. Glen Scotia 18, probably amazing, we'll see. It looks like I've tried that, but actually that's all I could get. So I, uh, I, I, I stole it off a friend. So I just poured it in quickly at a festival. Stealing is the wrong word, borrowed. Springbank, 18 years. Mm. I tried a very, very small sample of that fairly recently and it was just insanely good. Glen Scotia, 15, part of their core range at the moment. Long row, peated. I did cover it. I must have covered a wee sip of that. I didn't do much, obviously. Look at that. But really good, really good. And then finally for them, this is the Glen Scotia Victoriana. Don't know anything about that, but it's uh, above the 15 in their core range. So... I expect that it would be a bit better than that, but we'll see. 51.5%. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, I've kind of broken away a little bit here because I pushed my eyelids right to the wall, but this one here is my blended whiskey one. Did I just knock my mic? No. Nope. This is my blended whiskey selection. So it basically, if it didn't fit into anything else or it wasn't a malt or it was a mixture of several things, I put it here. We've got the Hanky Bannister Heritage Blend. Douglas Lang Syndicate, 58 divided by 6. I literally don't know anything about that. don't know why it's called that. Nothing. Interested, though, because I do like Douglas Lang. I do like Douglas Lang. Compass Box, Great King Street, Glasgow Blends. Now, I did the Artists Blend quite a while ago now, actually, uh, but big fan of Compass Box. I have tried this before. Really good. Should have done a side-by-side, -side, but I didn't have that at the time. Maybe I'll get some more of it. This is the Compass Box Spice Tree. Again, big fan of Compass Box. This one is awesome. Can't wait to bring that to you. And then we've got the Doers, 12 year and 18 year. Obviously Doers, a huge name in, in whiskey, kind of pioneering the blended whiskey and bringing whiskey to the world was one of the Doers many moons ago. Now this stuff here is just Lowlands. I've only got four of them, unfortunately, right now, but who knows what's coming in the next year because although I've got all this whiskey to cover. I'm still buying new stuff in all the time, which is why some of this stuff stays here for a while because, you know, not all of it's going to make a good video. Not all of it everyone wants to see, but so when I get new stuff in, it jumps it. Before I carry on, I did forget, actually, this good timing. I've got this weird golf ball thing. See that? From St. Andrews. Old St. Andrews blended whiskey, par four. I just picked it up because it was in a golf ball, but... It literally cost me like a two pounds, something like that. So I don't expect that to be any good, but I will cover that at some point. Right, we've got the XOP, extra old particular, Canvas, 35 years. Nice. Arkentoshan, Virgin Oak, batch two. Arkentoshan bartenders. Now, I've heard good and bad things about the bartenders. Really, it's... Literally, it's called a bartender's malt because it's about cocktail making. So to, to judge it in this arena seems a bit unfair, but I will give it a critical nose anyway. Glengoyne, 18 years. Just tried the 21 a couple of days ago. I had one of these small wee samples of it. This, this is a 25 mil. They also send one 10 mil and they sent the Glengoyne 21. Absolutely sublime. Looking forward to having that. Finally, 
probably my favourite category right now, if not the bourbons, and that's my Islas. And again, I don't have many because I like them so much I covered quite a lot last year. Now, when I wasn't a big fan of Islas, I was keeping them up here until I might like to try them. And I had something like 20, and I covered quite a lot of them last year. So we've got the Bamor 12 years. Tasty, tasty stuff. But more gets a bit of a bad rap because it's got a bit of a funk about it. And if you don't like that funk, it's a bit like the Aaron. If you don't like the funk, you're not going to get on with it. But, you know, whatever. Smokehead. Tasty, tasty. That's in a a cheapo plastic thing. Yeah, well, to be fair, while we're talking about plastic bottles, before we carry on, these things here, they are in plastic bottles and they do sit up here for a while. But I've tested this and I've tested this with the Dram team and the plastic doesn't make a bit of difference. But then it's really hard to tell anyway because you've got stuff like batch variation. We did a, I, I personally did a little thing where I, I got one and I tipped half of it into a glass bottle and half of it into left it in one of these. And after a year, I couldn't tell any difference. So don't worry about that. This used to be a Jameson's, but now it's a Kalila 18 years. Pucker. Lafroy Law. I saw an excellent video of that by Food Quig. Go and check him out if you don't know who he is. Uh, Lafroy Triple Wood. Is the Triple Wood? I think the Triple Wood might well be their travel retail exclusive. Not sure. I'll know by the time I do a video, of course. And lastly, the Big Pete, which is the Douglas Lang Remarkable Regional Malts for Isla. Really good. Uh, I have covered something like this on a Pete video I did last Christmas, 2017. And... I really like it, so I'm looking forward to bringing this to you. Well, there you go, that's all my samples and a, a bit of a different look at the shelves here. Before you go, I just want to ask you one more thing. I've got these three bottles down here. This is Uska Sauce. I'll show you, I'll show you, don't panic. Uska Sauce, so I've got three bottles here and these are three different waters. One from Speyside, one from Isla, one from Highland, all sourced from those locations. And the idea behind these is that they're meant to complement a whiskey from that area. So if I'm going to add water to a space side, I shouldn't be using my crappy tap water. I should be using space side water, right? So I want to know if you want to see a video where I critically assess not a whiskey, but these waters. The idea being I will have a space side, a Highland and an Isla whiskey to try and I will add these waters to it. But I'm also, if you're into the scientific method, I also want to try our whiskey, I haven't decided which one yet, and try them with each of these as well to see if it makes any difference to the whiskey depending on where the water comes from. Now I'll go into these a bit more later, like on, on the video if I do it, but it tells you the kind of flavour profile of these waters. I would like to try these on their own because you've got like low mineral, high mineral, that sort of thing. But if you want to see that video, let me know. If you're still watching this video, let me know in the comments below. Just say any of the dramas you wanted to see, and water, and I'll make sure I get those videos done. But there you go. Thanks for sticking around for this uh, bit of a longer video, it's probably about half an hour by, by now. The computer's just down there, so I'll check it out in a bit. But thanks for sticking around for this samples video. Hopefully you found something in there that was interesting. If there, Again, if there's anything you want to see over the next year, then don't forget to let me know in the comments below, or now, or whatever, because I'm probably going to do this as a premiere again. You probably know that by now, though. <laughs> So this is going to be a while. I probably won't do another one of these videos until maybe next year. Uh, I do a bottle video every year, but the sample collection video was specifically requested from me this year. If you like this kind of content, then let me know, and I'll do another one next year or maybe mid-year to let you know how things are changing, how things are evolving. But yeah, thanks for sticking around for this long. If you've stuck around this long and you're not a subscriber, then hit that, uh, hit that button down there and the bell notification, and don't forget to check out more videos. I uh, really appreciate everybody who's watching the videos right now going for a really good growth period and I'm going to keep doing them as long as you keep watching. Cheers guys.